Hi, boys and girls, it's Jilly. It's story time. Today, when I was on my walk, Sophie and I saw some ducks flying over our heads, and it made me think of Kota. Hi, Kota. And how he loves the duck song. So I thought maybe we would do the duck song since we do that at story time. Are you ready? Take a nice deep breath in. Five little ducks went out to play over the hill and far away. Mother duck said, quack, 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 quack. But only four little ducks came back. Four little ducks went out to play over the hill and far away. Mother duck said, quack, 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 quack. But only three little ducks came back. Three little ducks went out to play over the hill and far away. Mother duck said, quack, 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 quack. But only two little ducks came back. Two little ducks went out to play over the hill and far away. Mother duck said, quack, 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 quack. But only one little duck came back. This is the sad part. One little duck went out to play over the hill and far away. Mother duck said, quack, 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 quack. But no little ducks came back. No little ducks went out to play over the hill and far away. Mother duck said, quack, 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 quack. And all five little ducks came back. Hooray, a happy ending. Our first story also has a happy ending. You guys will remember this one. It's called Little Red Riding Hood. Here we go. Grandma's sick in bed, said Little Riding Hood's mother. Will you take this basket of food to her? Make sure you stay on the path. There's a big bad wolf in the forest. I can't see any wolves, thought Little Red Riding Hood as she set off. Little Red Riding Hood skipped along and saw some pretty flowers. Grandma would like those, she thought. And so she wandered off the path to pick them. Not a good idea, Red Riding Hood. Hello, little girl, growled a voice. It was the big bad wolf. What are you doing, he asked. Picking flowers for Grandma, said Little Red Riding Hood. The wolf grinned. How nice, he said. Why not pick those flowers, too? Then he slunk away. Once she had picked a pretty posy, Little Red Riding Hood followed the path to Grandma's house. Little did she know, but the wolf had gotten there before her. When Little Red Riding Hood arrived, she knocked and went inside. Hello, Grandma, it's me, Little Red Riding Hood called as she put the basket on the table. I'm in bed. Come through, dear, said a rather gruff voice. Little Red Riding Hood went into the bedroom. Eek. What big ears you have, Grandma, said Little Red Riding Hood in surprise. All the better to hear you with, came the reply. What big eyes you have, said Little Red Riding Hood. All the better to see you with, came the reply. What big teeth you have, said Little Red Riding Hood. All the better to eat you with, came the reply. In a flash, the wolf leaped out of bed and swallowed Little Red Riding Hood whole. Then he waddled out of the house with a full belly. You can peek inside his belly to make sure Little Red Riding Hood is all right. Let me out! Me too! There they are. Hello, Grandma. Did the wolf swallow you too? Yes, he did. 
a woodcutter was passing by and heard the cries for help. The woodcutter ran over and cut open the wolf's belly. Out sprang Grandma and Little Red Riding Hood. Grandma sewed up the wolf's belly with stones inside. That will teach you not to eat people, she said. They sent the wolf on his way, and they never, ever saw him again. Goodbye. Of course, one of my students used to say they never saw him again until we read the book again. The end. The next book we have is one we haven't read before, but I thought that your moms and dads might like it because it's about a little girl who uses her markers when she's at home and she's not the neatest. It's called Purple, Green, and Yellow by Robert Munch. Here we go. And there's a lot of beautiful colors in this one. Bridget went to her mother and said, I need some coloring markers. All my friends have coloring markers. They draw wonderful pictures. Mommy, I need some coloring markers. What did she forget to say, boys and girls? Please. Oh, no, said her mother. I've heard about those coloring markers. Kids draw on walls. They draw on the floor. They draw on themselves. You can't have any coloring markers. Well, said Bridget, there are these new coloring markers. They wash off with just water. I can't get into any trouble with coloring markers that wash off. Get me some of those. Uh, she forgot to say please again. Well, said her mother, all right. So her mother went out and got Bridget 500 washable coloring markers. Can you imagine? Bridget went up to her room and drew wonderful pictures. She drew lemons that were yellower than lemons and roses that were redder than roses and oranges that were oranger than oranges. Look at all of those beautiful things she drew. Her mother was amazed. She said, wow, my kid is an artist. But after a week, Bridget got bored. She went to her mother and said, Mom, did I draw on the wall? No, said her mother. Did I draw on the floor? No, said her mother. Did I draw on myself? No, said her mother. Well, said Bridget, I didn't get into any trouble and I need some new coloring markers. All my friends have them. Mommy, there are coloring markers that smell. They have ones that smell like roses and lemons and oranges and even ones that smell like cow plops, Mom. They have coloring markers that smell like anything you want. Mom, I need those coloring markers. Again, she forgot to say please. Her mother went out and got 500 coloring markers that smelled. Then Bridget went upstairs and drew pictures. She drew lemons that smelled like lemons and roses that smelled like roses and oranges that smelled like oranges and cow plops that smelled like cow plops. Yuck. Her mother said, wow, my kid is an artist. But after a week, Bridget got bored. She said, mom, did I draw on the floor? No, said her mother. Did I draw on the walls? No, said her mother. Did I draw on myself? No, said her mother. Well, said Bridget, I need some new coloring markers. These are the best kind. All my friends have them. They are super indelible, never come off till you're dead, and maybe even later, coloring markers. Mom, I need them. She still didn't say please. So her mother went out and got 500 super indelible, never come off till you're dead, and maybe even later, coloring markers. Bridget took them and drew pictures for three weeks. She drew lemons that looked better than lemons, and roses that looked better than roses, and oranges that looked better than oranges, and sunsets 
that looked better than sunsets. She is very busy. Then she got bored. She said, I'm tired of drawing on the paper, but I am not going to draw on the walls and I am not going to draw on the floor and I am not going to draw on myself. But everybody knows it's okay to color your fingernails. Even my mother colors her fingernails. So Bridget took a purple, super indelible, never come off till you're dead and maybe even later coloring marker and she colored her thumbnail bright purple. And that was so pretty, she colored all her fingernails purple, black, and yellow. And that was so pretty, she colored her hands yellow, green, and red. I don't think this is a good idea, boys and girls. And that was so pretty, she colored her face purple, green, yellow, and blue. And that was so pretty, she colored her belly button blue. And that was so pretty, she colored herself all sorts of colors, almost entirely all over. Can you see that, boys and girls? Then Bridget looked in the mirror and said, what have I done? My mother's going to kill me. So she ran into the bathroom and washed her hands for half an hour. Nothing came off. Her hands still look like mixed up rainbows. Then she had a wonderful idea. She reached way down into the bottom of the coloring markers and got a special colored marker. It was the same color as she was. She took that marker and colored herself all over until she was her regular color again. In fact, she looked even better than before. Almost too good to be true. She went downstairs and her mother said, why, Bridget, you're looking really good today. Right, said Bridget. Then her mother said, it's time to wash your hands for dinner. But Bridget was afraid that the special color would not stick to the colors underneath. So she said, I already washed my hands. Um, is that true? I don't think so. But her mother smelled her hands and said, ah, uh, no soap. She took Bridget into the bathroom and washed her hands and face. All the special color came off and Bridget looked like mixed up rainbows. Oh no, said her mother. Bridget, did you color your hands with the coloring markers that wash off? No. Bridget, did you color your hands with the coloring markers that smell? No. Did you use the super indelible never come off till you're dead and maybe even later coloring markers? Yes. Yikes, said her mother. She called the doctor and said, help, help, help. My daughter has colored herself with super indelible never come off till you're dead and maybe even later coloring markers. Oh dear, said the doctor. Sometimes they never come off. The doctor came over and gave Bridget a large orange pill. She said, take this pill, wait five minutes, and then take a bath. So Bridget took the pill, waited five minutes, and jumped into the bathtub. Her mother stood outside the door and yelled, is it working, is it working, is it working? Yes, said Bridget, everything is coming off. And Bridget was right, everything had come off. When Bridget walked out of the bathroom, she was invisible. Boys and girls, that's a very big word for she couldn't be seen. No one could see her. Oh no, yelled her mother. You can't go to school if you're invisible. You can't go to university if you're invisible. You'll never get a job if you're invisible. Bridget, you've wrecked your life. Don't worry, said Bridget. She ran into her room, got the special colored marker, and colored herself entirely all over until you couldn't tell the difference. In fact, she looked even better than before, almost too good to be true. But her mother said, Bridget, you can't go through life like that. You're just a picture. Everyone will know there is something wrong. No, they won't, said Bridget. Yes, they will, 
said her mother. No, they won't, said Bridget. I colored Daddy while he was taking a nap, and you haven't noticed anything yet. Good heavens, yelled her mother, and she ran into the living room and looked at Daddy. He looked even better than before. Almost too good to be true. Doesn't he look great, asked Bridget. I couldn't even tell the difference, said her mother. Right, said Bridget, and neither will he. As long as he doesn't get wet. The end. So boys and girls, I do not think it is a very good idea for you to go and color on yourself. Just so you know. But you definitely could draw a picture of your hands and color it in or draw a picture of your face and color it in. Our last book today is also about coloring because, you know, Jilly's the art teacher. This one's called Harold's Fairy Tale by Crockett Johnson. And this book has been around for a really, really long time, even maybe when your moms and dads were little. Here we go. And this sign, boys and girls, says to the enchanted garden. Have you found an enchanted garden on any of your walks? Ready? One evening, Harold got out of bed, took his purple crayon and the moon along and went for a walk in an enchanted garden. Nothing grew in it. If he hadn't known it was an enchanted garden, Harold scarcely would have called it a garden at all. Enchanted, boys and girls, is a big fancy word for magic. To find out what the trouble was, Harold decided to ask the king. Kings live in large castles. Harold had to make sure the castle was big enough to be the king's. He didn't want to waste time talking to any princes or earls or dukes. <clears throat> This was a king's castle, all right. It had tall towers and a big draw gate to keep out the people that the king didn't want to see. Hmm. I don't know if that's very nice. But when the draw gate was drawn closed, it kept Harold out too. Harold shouted for the king to come down and let him in, but the gate didn't open. He walked along the edge of the enchanted garden beside the smooth wall of the castle until he thought of his purple crayon. A person smaller than a very small mouse would be able to get in. Without even bending, he walked into a very small mouse hole. He walked through the mouse hole into the castle. He invited the mouse in too, but the mouse preferred to stay outside. As he gazed around inside the big castle, Harold felt very tiny. And a king might not pay much attention to anybody who was smaller than a mouse, so Harold used his purple crayon again. He made sure he was as tall as four and a half steps of stairs, his usual height. Do you see he drew some lines up, over, up, over, up, over, up, over, up, over. You could try that at home to learn to draw some stairs. Then he climbed up the stairs, looking for the king. He went up and up and up until he got so tired he couldn't climb another step. Luckily, there were no more steps. He had reached the top. He still couldn't find the king, but he remembered that kings sit on thrones. The king's throne looked very comfortable. Harold thought the king wouldn't mind if he rested a few minutes. He sat on the throne wondering what it was like to be a king and wear a crown. Boys and girls, can you guess what's going to come next? I think it might be a crown. He tried it with the king's crown. A crown has a line like this. Up, down, up, down, up, down. You could try those too, and you could draw a crown. It was all right for a while, but the crown began to feel heavy. So Harold put it on the king's head. 
As he thanked the king for the loan of the crown, he noticed the king looked sad, no doubt because of the garden. He asked the king if the trouble was due to a witch or a giant. The king couldn't say which. He looked sad and helpless. Evidently, the giant or witch, if the king couldn't tell what it was, was invisible. Ooh, there's that big word again. Invisible means you can't see it. But Harold told the king not to worry. He set off to find the invisible witch or giant brandishing his purple crayon. And accidentally, his purple crayon made a hole in the wall. Oops. The accident embarrassed Harold. He felt bad. But the hole was the handiest way out of the castle, and he climbed through it. When he looked down from the other side of the hole, he realized he had forgotten how high up he was. He needed something tall to climb down on, something as tall as a steeple. That's a very tall part of a church or a castle. To fill the hole in the castle, Harold put a handsome and useful clock in it. He was surprised to see how late it was. Boys and girls, if you'd like to draw a clock, you would just draw a circle with some lines for numbers. He slid down the steeple to find the invisible witch or giant right away. It wasn't a steeple. It was a pointed hat. Hmm. It was a giant witch. The purple crayon made it plain. It was an invisible giant witch. Well, no wonder nothing grew in the enchanted garden. How could anything grow? Harold said to himself with a giant witch tramping around the big feet. Now that he saw what the trouble was, all Harold had to do was drive the witch out of the enchanted garden. Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes, Harold knew, will drive anybody out of a garden. They definitely make us not want to be out on the playground sometimes. The mosquitoes drove out the witch. They also were driving Harold out of the garden. He had to make smoke to get rid of the mosquitoes. And he had once heard somebody say that where there's smoke, there must be fire. To put out the fire, he first thought of fire engines, but he decided to make it rain. Rain was easier. And boys and girls, look how you can make rain with your purple crayon. Just some lines down. The rain soaked everything. Harold too. But he said, it's good for the flowers. He was right. Soon there were flowers. Beautiful flowers popped up all over the enchanted garden, more than Harold was able to count, all in gorgeous bloom. Boys and girls, let's count the flowers. Will you count with me? Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And a flower is like this, a circle, a line down, an oval, an oval, an oval, an oval. And for the petals, Harold drew lines. You guys can do that. Harold thought how delighted and happy the king would be when he looked out from the castle in the morning. And then, amazingly, the last flower turned out to be not a flower at all, but a lovely fairy. She held out her magic wand, as fairies always do when they're giving somebody wishes that will come true. If you look, a magic wand is just a line with some lines around it. You could do that too. Harold couldn't think of a thing to wish for, but to be polite, he took one wish and told the fairy he'd use it later. Besides, Harold thought as he started on his long walk home, a wish might come in handy sometime. After all the excitement, he suddenly felt tired and he stopped to rest a while. He sat on a small rug because the ground was still somewhat damp from the rain and he wished. He wished the rug was a flying carpet. At once, 
Harold felt it rise in the air. It flew fast and high. But when it went so fast it left the moon behind, Harold realized he didn't know how to stop the carpet or even how to slow it down. He wished he'd taken two wishes from the fairy so he could wish the flying carpet would land. Boys and girls, do you think he might use his purple crayon? I do. Haha, <laughs> but he did have his purple crayon. He landed the flying carpet in his living room right behind the high back chair his mother sat in knitting. And he asked her to read him a story before he went back to bed. The end. Boys and girls, if you read these stories today, maybe you can draw some things with your purple crayons. And when we meet for morning meeting tomorrow morning, you can tell me what you drew with your purple crayon. I hope you have a good night. I love you and I miss you.